Hello, greetings. Welcome to episode eight of season three of the uh, Stoic Poetry Podcast. My name is Kurt, and I'm so happy to have you here beside the fire. Not too many of these left. Maybe three, I think, maybe three or four more before uh, this life is finished. But let's get started with uh, a little bit of our uh, cider. I'd like to pour you a symbolic glass if you're interested. Here we go. Get things started. All right. It's a cold one tonight. Not desperately cold yet. It's supposed to really drop in the next couple of days. But it's, it's getting there. Okay. Oh. The full moon. You can see the whole sky illuminated with uh, the moonlight and the clouds. The high upper sky atmospheric clouds, no stars to be seen, just the uh, sparks rising into the sky. I've got my hose at the ready, back there just in case. <sighs> Let me take a breath. It's such a different type of thing. The deep breaths that come of this age They're robust, full of uh, invigorating oxygen, soothing and calming. Not like those deep breaths of the last 40 years, the working years. The years when the deep breaths came of the exasperation and the exhaustion, all the X words, expiring breaths breathing out the frustrations of the day, inhaling in desperate breath. Now, I know it's not like that for everybody. There's a lot of people who seem to uh, do well through their mid-years. I did the best I could. I did my duty. That counts for something. But now, for maybe if I'm lucky, Maybe a full decade, I'll have the ability to take this kind of breath. The breath of a, of a runner, you know, who's reached the summit and uh, starts to jog down the hill and is breathing and taking in the air. It goes, ah, you know, invigorating. In, 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 it's, it's, like, it's like stimulation in a way. That's what it feels like now. Maybe a little anticipation in, mixed in, but for the most part, it's pretty good and non uh, not painful but i know that's going to come to an end you know maybe after 10 years or so those breaths will return to being the, the labored breath that will be the breath the breaths that come as the wind down of life occurs so with that in mind i'm not going to uh, take these for granted and i'm not going to keep them secret i'm not going to hide them you know, I, I juggle this difficult balancing act every day in my daily good life meditations, which are a video that I do every morning shortly after waking up <laughs> to remember my life objectives and principles as outlined in my book, Going Alone. That's part of the spiel that I say every morning when I do the video. I've been doing it every day for since 2018, about six years. And that exercise has been quite fruitful in helping me to tune my life, stay, stay aligned with my principles in the direction of my objectives. But in those videos, I, I mean, I'm less than a month away from the R word, retirement. And I, and I want to tell the world what this is like. But I'm hesitant too because I know it's a it's a it's it's a difficult subject to talk about. People don't talk about it. It's like they don't talk about sometimes their religious thoughts or their philosophy or their the things that really touch them for fear that they may be 
criticized or judged or ridiculed or just talked about behind their back for by virtue of what they say. With regard to retirement, add to it, to it the fact that it's a subject difficult to talk about because <clears throat> retirement is not equally distributed in the course of life. Some people get to retire very early. Some, like me, get to retire a, a little bit ahead of their game, so to speak, you know, age 60. Some get to retire on time, and you know, which is, you know, what do you call on time, right? Depends on the country. I would, here in the United States, according to the Social Security Administration, that would be either 62, 65, or what they call full retirement at 67. But that doesn't work out for everybody. For some people, it doesn't work out at all. And I'm sensitive to that, and I'm aware of it, and I want to be sensitive to those that are struggling to make this happen. Yet at the same time, I also want to relate this experience, especially now that I'm in the heat of it all, right? Uh, going through the, the wind down, the transition that's coming up, that last day of work on December 12th, when I go into the office and see my boss and turn in my badge and computer and then walk that walk that I've seen others walk before me out to the parking lot to uh, their car and then to drive off into a new life. I think it's important to talk about this because that's what I do. That's the whole gist of my channel on YouTube. My presence on social media is to be someone who shares life the ups and the downs. Also, I like to do it for the benefit of those that are younger to maybe impart not financial advice, but at least some experience about that I've had with the, the luck I've had and the near misses and the, some of the good decisions I've made along the way. Maybe that will help others to get to this point themselves. But before we do proceed any further, let me throw another log on the fire or two. Here's a big one. It's gonna render some sparks. Ooh. <laughs> Didn't even get it in there, probably. Stick those two on there, why not? That is one giant piece of wood. this burns. Thank you while I attended to that. That was more like wrestling with a fire than anything else. Okay, so now that, now that I've cleared the air, so to speak, that I'm going to uh, touch on the topic of retirement in this video and all subsequent videos where, where, where appropriate, let's begin. The first stone, I've got my stones here. I've got one, two, four, just four. First stone here is to talk about uh, the state and condition of the Gaijin Twitter Podcast Collective. Also known as just the Gaijin Podcast Collective. Either either will do. Um, I mean, uh, the, uh, yeah, the Gaijin Podcast Collective. So, uh, our little group on X. 
we um, are continuing our efforts. Uploads are coming. Communication is happening. The familiarity in the group is, is growing. Some of us are rather distracted by life, buying houses, looking for, you know, new career opportunities, you know, tending to working overseas, um, not me, someone, you know, others, uh, and all the other things that happen, you know, some have small children to attend to, you know, older kids, whatever the case may be, right? The nice thing is that our, well, it's all nice. One really nice thing is that our weekly uh, get-togethers on uh, the voice mode in X have become very fluid and, and, and easy. It used to be awkward. The first couple of sessions were kind of awkward, but now it's a, it's, it's like a gathering of friends at a, at a pub at know each other well. We don't know each other perfectly well, but we know each other well enough to, to know how to communicate, to know how to, how to, how to chat with one another and with the guests who join us in a way that doesn't feel like stepping on toes, which was never deliberate. It was always just accidental without any nonverbal cues. And the chats can go on for hours. Like, I mean, constantly, one hour is easy. We can easily go three plus hours. The only thing that really seems to bring the, the conversation to a close is the fact that uh, it gets late and people need to, need to sleep. It's also happened in midweek. So they need to get to sleep if they have work the next day. It's nice to see this group growing like that. It reminds me very much of the old JVlog group back in the day. Although, of course, on the X platform instead. Such interesting people. That's the real common thread. Interesting, good-natured, good-hearted, big-hearted people that aren't there for any other reason <clears throat> than to connect and communicate and share their love of life and the experience <clears throat> of their life or their love of Japan. There's several of, pe of the folks there, including myself right now, who are not in Japan and who are uh, participating by the wayside, so to speak, yet are endeavoring as best we can to live our best lives. So, good kudos to that. That's all there is to say to that. Next stone, let's talk about the state of the move. Okay, so um, big, big things happened this week between today and the last time I, I, I talked here. Um, last week when I was sitting here doing this, I was in a high state of suppressed anxiety, anxious over all of the things that needed to happen between now and the end of the third week of December. Namely, the need to secure my, my entry permit, which leads to my green, my, um, resident card, equivalent of like a green card here in the United States. I needed to secure that. I needed to find a buyer for my wife's car. I needed to rent a new Airbnb somewhere close out of the desert here so I don't get trapped in the snow. I needed to uh, secure a veterinary appointment. Very difficult to do because there's only two vets in the entire area here that could do this to do a final checkup for my dog 10 days within 10 days of his flight, our flight, on the 18th of December. I needed to uh, arrange for an address service. I need to contact um, HR where I work to ask them some questions about my last day at work. And I needed to rent a vehicle. And I needed to figure out how I was going to get rid of my wife's car and then get to the rental car, all while managing my little dog, Rudy, who's sitting behind me right now, uh, who's a holy terror of a tiny chihuahua, not a very social dog. All of that within one month, as of last week. Now today, one week later, all of that is taken care of. It all fell into place. So I was able to sell the car 
to, I still have it. I'll have it for another three weeks. I was able to sell it to a, a friend of mine, who uh, a student who made good use of it. I was able to um, <clears throat> decide about how to uh, handle the rental car. I decided against the Airbnb. The rental car will, I'll, I'll, I'll rent it from Enterprise Rental in the same area where this aforementioned student lives. And on the day that uh, we do the car handover, which would be December 7th, I will meet him at that uh, car rental place. We'll do the handover. Well, I'll rent the car, do the handover. We're done. As for the dog, I reached out to the vet, um, requested the appointment. They sent me the paperwork, which I filled out. I sent it back to them. And the uh, pet shipping service sent them all their paperwork they need. They have everything that they need. We're all set to go for that. The uh, contacted HR, gave me my last day instructions, and it's all in place. With regard to what's happening in Japan, um, my wife and I have decided to step back from the Machia house in Shimizu for two reasons. One, we want to get a clear picture of the cost to do the uh, Remodeling. No, it's not really remodeling. It's uh, earthquake retrofit work that we'd like to have done to make it safe. And we realize that that'll take a week or two. And that'll put, put us within like three weeks of me being in Japan. And with that in mind, it's we've decided it's better to postpone making a big decision like buying a house <clears throat> until uh, we reach that time. So we're going to hold off. And I, I have to hold off on even looking at places. We're also going to expand our search. We're like, why do we, why are we, what's the rush? Really, the only rush that I feel right now is the rush to not waste the realtor's time. We have this extraordinary realtor who's helping us. And I would like to uh, continue to use him as we take our time. But I don't want to waste his time, right? So, but, so, that's part of the, but that's part of the thing, right? I mean, this isn't the type of thing that we should rush to make a purchase just because we don't want to utilize a realtor's time. That's part of their job, right? We could always other reach out to other realtors too. Hmm. That might be a good idea. Emily, our daughter, seems to be doing good. She's doing an event, big event, uh, social event for her, her new job. Well, it's not really a new job. I, I'll just give you, a, I'll tell you a little bit about that. She went to Japan with a job offer and she had also been looking for other jobs, you know, doing her due diligence. And one of those came through turned out to be a really exceptionally good job with a, a very large corporation in Japan. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty dang good position. And uh, so they do these, she's, she won't be starting the jo that job until uh, spring next year. So she's doing <clears throat> part-time work now in Tokyo between now and then. So they're, they're beginning to ramp up, and I'm learning all kinds of things. And the company's having a, uh, a big, uh, you know, get-together for the new hires down in uh, one of the big theme parks in Japan. So she's going to go attend that. Very proud of her. She did good. You know, I can feel it now as a parent. You know, they, they say that in Japan... The thing that parents hope for for their kids with regard to work, if they're working, is to get a job with the government. Stable, secure, sound, and solid, right? And I remember hearing that years and years ago and thinking how dull and pedestrian that sounded, you know, to work for the government, which is exactly what I do. <laughs> but maybe now, partially because of that, because I've had a, I finished my career with 11 years in the government, I know now why. It's a good gig if you can get it. You might not make as much salary. Like I work in IT. I can make a better salary in the private sector, but it doesn't come with the benefits 
uh, working in the public sector. The security, the stability, the uh, well, well matured human resources department and a very good benefits package. And now that I've gone through all of that and I'm older and I'm happy to see that my daughter is joining a giant company. Sure, as my friend told me last week, there's risk in selling yourself, so to speak, for the security. Great risk at that. True, indeed. Yet there's great risk in the other path, too, huh? Hmm. And I've known plenty of people who have managed the big corporation or the government path without necessarily selling themselves. But you know what? I will tell you this. The ones that I've known that have done that are the ones that came to it late. The ones who lit, worked in the private sector for 30 of their 40 years, 40 year careers, and then only came to the public sector in the last five to 10 years. So they, they brought whatever it was from that other life into the public sector life, which sustained them. Because once you get into the public sector, it may be hard to, to get out when you realize just how, how good you got it. All right. Anything else about the move? I just gotta dwell back just a little bit and say how grateful I am for my new friends in the Gaijin Twitter Podcast Collective. I feel like I've got a community even before I get back to Japan. And for any of you that might see this who are not on the X platform, um, like my friends on Facebook, it's a different world over there. The way that I think about it is this. I hope I can word this in such a way that it comes across correctly. Facebook is like a family reunion at a buffet house. You know what I mean? When that, you know, once every five years, grandma decides, grandma and grandpa decide they're going to bring the clan together and they throw a big event at the uh, the hometown buffet or, or Knott's Berry Farm here in Southern California. And I'm speaking from experience. And I'm grateful for those experiences. And all the family comes, all the uncles, the aunts, the cousins and siblings and all the, everybody's there. That's what Facebook is to me. Facebook is the family, my family on the internet. Not that my family are necessarily there. The only person there that's there that's my family are my, my wife and my brother. I think my niece and nephew and my daughter, I, mean, I know my daughter's, daughter's there, but I don't think they, they use it. Boomers that we are. There's something rattling around the bushes out there, as usual. So if... Facebook is the buffet at Knott's Berry Farm. If Facebook is the family reunion at Knott's Berry Farm, X is the university campus pizza shop where all the fascinating people that you meet in college hang out, come together, to have pizza and drink beer, and be surrounded by equally fascinating people. This doesn't necessarily mean the facet that the people on Facebook aren't fascinating. It's just a different dynamic, right? Because all of those fascinating people go home to their own, you know, Knott's Berry Farms with their family reunions. But there's something about that environment on the X platform that reminds me so much of that egalitarian college atmosphere of fascinating, wonderful, wonderful, inspired, optimistic, youthful, if not you, if not young people reside. 
Yeah, yeah, I know you're probably the same as you hear that. Kurt, were you are you talking about the same place that I'm experiencing on X? Because X, you might be saying, I don't, you know, I'm just, I'm just, you know, you, <laughs> generic you might be saying, X seems to be a cesspool of, of anger and violence and upset and negativities. And, you, and I say, yeah, sure, it's maybe there. But for the most part, uh, I tend to scroll past that stuff. Maybe it's part of my job. <laughs> because as the uh, moderator, the administrator, actually, of the Gaijin Twitter Podcast Collective community, Onyx, which is not really a community of engagement at this time. It's a community of, it's an audience, really. Because I'm, what I do, basically, is I, I scroll through, I created a list, a Gaijin Twitter Podcast Collective list with over... 300 people now that I've identified that are meet the criteria of a Gaijin Twitter person, which is basically someone who is tweeting about or in Japan. And it doesn't matter if it's in English. I can use the translate thing. There's some people that are using other languages and talking about Japan, and I'll tweet. I'll do them as well. I'll, I'll reshare them. And so I've created this community. It's grown to a pretty large number. Um... And all I do is I say, scroll through the list. I find the stuff that I find, uh, you know, that's the thing. It's the stuff that meets the criteria that I'm after, which is really all you need to do to be shared is to be a, gla a glass half full tweet. That's all it takes, right? <laughs> if your tweet is a glass half full tweet and it has anything to do with Japan I'm going to share it with the community so maybe it's because that's my job and I spend it's one of the things on my checklist every day that I need to do is to go through the Gaijin Twitter the Gaijin Twitter list the, the you know of all the people that I have a special a list that I created and anyone can subscribe to that list it does I don't get anything from it you just you get to see all those people and then I share the ones, the best of the best, the, 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 the most, the most optimistic, no, not, the optimism and upbeatness is not, is not the criteria. It's interesting, engaging, humorous, ironic, with, without being at the expense of anyone. That's all it takes. And I share that. And given that I, I have to do that every day. And I do it basically, I share it until it gets to the point that the Twitter algorithm says, stop, Kurt, you've shared enough for today. And then I know I've reached my quota and I'm done. It takes, it takes more than an hour or so every day to do that. As a result, I, I, I just zip past the stuff that's the half empty type of stuff, the, the downer stuff, the pol political stuff, the, uh, the, you know, the infighting that occurs. So I don't really see that on Twitter anymore. So Twitter has become, for me, a curated feed of optimistic, upbeat, Japan-related, uh, or influenced, or uh, focused, uh, half-full kind of tweets. <laughs> and I love it. Posts. So, back to the point. As a result of that engagement, Twitter has become, X has become my home on the internet. Although my repository of all of my work, of course, is still on YouTube. X is the place where my people are. And I'm very grateful for them. Okay. That's about all there is for the move. Retirement. I promised I'd talk about it, right? Okay. What's going on right now? Well... Not much. And that's the honest truth. Not much because I'm not needed much anymore. I've talked about this a couple for the last couple of weeks. My work has moved on beyond me, which is a good thing. If they still needed me in the meetings and they still required my engagement, that would be a worrisome thing. But they found their own way. That's not the right way to say it. But it, it sounds like the right way to say it. Because as a project manager, I was the one that led the way. So they found their own way now without me. So, 
for, for a couple of weeks, I felt guilty that I was being so quiet and mute and having nothing to say. But I've kind of crossed the Rubicon in a way where now I see that as a, the blessing. That's the way it should be. This is the quiet time for me to answer questions when asked. And hopefully nobody will ask. Because if they don't ask, then that's good. That means they don't need me. Am I a little bit worried about that last day and what to do next? Oh man, it takes my breath away. I've always, always seemingly had work or school to turn to, to prop me up, to give me my meaning and purpose in life beyond the meaning and purpose of fatherhood and being a husband and a community member and I will still have those but those don't require or demand much of me like what's the 13th going to be like that'll be a Friday December 13th when I have no more Mondays wow well, no more Mondays of work that is Hopefully I'll have lots of Mondays still. It's invigorating and scary all at the same time. <sighs> Whoa, man. I'm sorry, but it, it really is all that in a, in, a, in a cup of tea. To imagine waking up every day and having that day my own. To do as I see fit. I'll have from the 12th, which will be a Thursday, to the 18th. Just soak that up a little bit before I go to Japan, which is probably just enough time. And I'll have a rental car with unlimited mileage. Probably what I'll do, this is what I ought to do, is get everything packed up and ready to go. And then um, as soon as I get the rental car, me and the little dog, we will just burn up the miles. Maybe we'll go to the Colorado River. Maybe I can, if I, maybe there's a chance I could go visit my professor in New Mexico, David Bixler. He factored a dig in my story of my life I'm not not the story of my life my life story not, not my life story my life's work going alone he doesn't show up much in it but he's an instrumental person and he did invite me out to see him at one time maybe I'll reach out to him again that would be a worthwhile weekend adventure Or maybe the little dog and I can make a run to Humboldt County with those unlimited miles. Just drive all day and all night to go back to Trinidad where I was the caretaker at Moonstone Beach. What do you think of that, little dog? Wouldn't that be fun? Look at that little boy. And maybe that would be a good way to kick off retirement kick it off as an adventure kick it off with an adventure to embark upon an adventure and oh my gosh guys I'm so looking forward to 2025 and uh, the year with my wife now Emily if you see this my daughter don't take this the wrong way but now that you're grown and gone and really, take, I don't want you to take this the wrong way if you see this. You, Emily, were the purpose of, my, of our lives. You, my, your mom and I. So, but the thing is, you're grown now. And that purpose has been fulfilled. Now, Yumiko and I can have again. And it, this is the part. I don't want you to think, if you see this, that you stood in the way of this. It was not the case. It was our mission and our purpose and our role during your growing years to be mom and dad and to fulfill those particular roles. Now that you're grown, 
Um, we can do whatever the hell we want. And what we're going to do, because we've already got a head start on it, is to become a couple again. It was, again, it's not that you didn't make us a couple. You know what I mean. It was different. We were Mama and Papa. Now we can be Kurt and Yumiko again. And I'm really looking forward to that. 2025, the search for a home. Finding ourselves again. Enjoying our couple life. Finding ourselves as content creators. Because Yumiko wants to join me in this. Oh my gosh. It seems like it's not fair. Like, like something's got to happen. Like, you know, it's too good to be true. What's the surprise? What's What, what cataclysm is going to come falling down? And it could, right? You know, one of us could be struck down or something could happen. But it's looking pretty good from now, from this point of view. Here's the retirement. And the last stone for tonight. You know, sometimes we have um, questions uh, for these. And usually Ricky is the arbiter of the questions, the giver outer of the questions. Sometimes Tracy. This week it was me. Uh, in our meeting, uh, which was this morning for me with a Gaijin Twitter team, um, we didn't have a question, so I made one up afterwards, which is, here's the question, simple. What food in Japan, or foods, did you have a hate-love relationship or hate-like relationship? Something that you couldn't tolerate, you couldn't stand when you first came to Japan, but then grew to love. For me, there are three foods. Um, natto, unagi, and, uh, what is it, osechi? Is that, am I saying it right? <laughs> the New Year's food, you know, the, the, the stuff that you eat. So, natto, I think, is, that doesn't require an explanation. A lot of foreigners struggle with that for the taste, the consistency, and some people even say the smell. Uh, unagi is a strange one not to not like because it's so delicious, but it is an exotic flavor, and then, you know, the grill, the eel from ostensibly sometimes the best from Lake Hamanako and Hamanatsu, Hamamatsu and Shizuoka. And the Osechi, that's a strange one as well. It's extreme, It's an interesting combination of kind of some, some seemingly cooked food, but not real seasoned foods that you eat on New Year's. And for some reason, those three just didn't hit when I first got there. And within about two to three years of my first time living in Japan, I came around to all three of them. So much so that I came to be a natto um, devourer, taking natto in every meal when I could. As for unagi, I'll, I'll, eat all, I'll eat that all day long if I could afford it. Osechi, that took a while. That took decades before I finally came around for that. Still not my favorite, but what I adore more than anything else is, is the, the spirit of the season, of the new year, and sharing that with my family. Those are my foods. And with that, my rocks are gone. My episode is complete. I really appreciate you spending a little time with me and letting me expound a little bit on the last week, what's happening in my life, especially as I go through this enormous, gigantic transition to a new life. This life will soon end. I don't know if you can see it. The desert will show up. It's a full moon. There it is. But you can't really see the desert. Just my little home and the two lights, the one fire and the little lamp that I use to illuminate my face. Yeah, that's my everything right back there. It's awfully little. It's awfully quiet. It's awfully alone, just me and my little dog. But it's been home for five months. A good place to call home. A good place to live for a little while, for a season of life, two seasons maybe. You know what it is? It's a margin and a buffer between the life of the family man, the career man, social man and the life 
that follows once freedom is realized with the understanding that that freedom is short-lived and must be appreciated and enjoyed as much as we can. Not just as much as we can. It's not just about enjoyment. It's about making good use of the time to live well in the days that remain so that I can die in peace knowing that I did my best. Be safe, but not too safe.